Hi everyone, it's Dr. Keen and I'm so excited to be here today for day two of the five day challenge. And I'm here in person with a uh, functional nutritionist, Nursa Douglas. Hello. <laughs> it's so wonderful, number one, to be able to see people and yes. have interviews live. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> so we're here um, in Nurse's home here in Bermuda, just overlooking Bermuda, beautiful water. But today we're gonna talk a little bit about Nurse's approach to the five day challenge. She's got lots of experience. She works with lots of people talking about health and wellness, and you'll hear a little bit of her personal journey and some stories. So Nursa, do you wanna get started? Yeah, sure. So um, in terms of um, what I'm working on this week, for me under the loving and awareness umbrella, um, I'm really trying to do some gratitude work. And um, for me to get a book and write down things I'm grateful for, doesn't seem to work so well. I feel like I need a little bit more direction and a little bit more structure. So what does really work for me is a gratitude journal. Um, so in this journal, um, I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. There's lots of different journals out on the market, which may or may not work for you. I think you just need to kind of look around a bit. But this one I particularly like because it kind of um, sets an intention for the day. Um, it gives you a little bit of um, structure around obviously things that you're grateful for, things that maybe you stop working towards. Sometimes um, I feel like a lot of our brain space is taken up by things that don't really matter um, at the end of the day. So sometimes bringing awareness to that is quite helpful. And then I particularly like this, um, what I'm looking forward to. So sometimes it's just nice, whether it's something um, this week, next week, in a year's time, but things to look forward to as well, just to like lift your mood and energy levels as well. So that really helps me. But also just having some fun stationery sometimes works as well. So just like fancy stationery that you look forward to using, some nice pens and things like that um, are nice. And again, it doesn't really matter when you do your journey. Some people like to do it first thing in the morning to set um, the stance for the day. Some people like to reflect on the day and do it before they go to bed. Um, some people just prefer to do it as they go along. So there's no right or wrong answer. Um, I think whichever way you do it, you'll soon notice that you'll get a lot out of it. Do you agree? Yes, for sure. And, you know, just the concept of having something that's fun that you enjoy. And, you know, I love that Nurse says all about touch and texture and color and feel because that's really important to us. And I just have to say that this one, I'm going to show this to my nieces. The fairies made me do it. Isn't but that fun? it's just fun, right? And this is what life needs to be like. Um, and we want to appreciate because gratitude is one of the most amazing emotions absolutely, that we can have. Absolutely. And it's just like for little things, like um, somebody holding the door for you at the coffee shop. Like it's just something nice that, you know, just to like appreciate the little things in life. Um, for me, it's actually my morning coffee. I'm really grateful for that most days. So. <laughs> me too. <laughs> See, doctor and nutritionist, coffee is okay in limited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So um, what about... So then moving down. Yes. Yeah. Lots to talk on this one. So lots to talk about this one. The narrow feeding window. Um, I practice most of those things actually because um, my body just seems to work better that way. Um, I'm just gonna pull up this actually just so that um, we can talk about this in a little bit more detail. Um, so the one litre um, of eating, it's drinking, sorry, before you eat or drink anything. I again find that, um, as you can tell, I'm quite a tech sub. Um, Text, but not textile person, what's the word I'm looking for? I like to be able to touch things and I like colour. <laughs> so carrying around a water bottle is really handy for me, especially one that I quite like the look of. Um, so I generally do take this everywhere with me. It's in the car, so I sip away whilst I'm driving to work or wherever I'm going. Um, it's at my desk, so um, as I'm working, as I'm seeing clients, etc. So I'm always sipping away anyway. But it's super, super important this time of year because we might not necessarily feel like having cold drinks this time of year, right? Exactly. Especially, and I know when I say to my family in the UK, it's got cold here, they laugh at me because it's really not cold compared to the UK. But it does feel cold, doesn't it? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> and people, when they say, I don't sweat in the winter, but that's but fine, you but you, you yeah. do. And you still need to have that amount of water. So then um, I think it's important to look at maybe herbal teas, right? So um, as with decaf teas and decaf coffee, one thing to bear in mind is that they still can contain a little bit of caffeine, as we know. And the half-life of caffeine is quite long, meaning that um, it can last in your system for quite a long time. So I think that to be on the safe side, to try herbal teas, um, decaffeinated herbal teas would be a good idea. And they help towards your hydration as well, because I don't dehydrate you. 
Also things such as like just fresh lemon and ginger and hot water is quite nice, isn't it? It's nice and soothing. I and love gin ginger tea, just amazing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely amazing. Um, and again, you might find that you would gravitate more towards that than just cold water this time of year, and that's mm. absolutely fine as well. Um, and then the eight hour window, I'm a big fan of this um, because I practice intermittent fasting and it's just again something that I really enjoy. We can talk about that at the end a little bit more, but it's just super flexible. It doesn't really matter how you do it, what time you start, what time you finish. It just completely works around the individual. I know you do it as well, Dr. Kenner, yes. don't you? Um, we'll talk about the benefits of that a little bit later. Um, so I've kind of been doing that for probably over two years now. Um, and then the no food three hours before bed <laughs> over the Christmas period, I really struggled with that. And actually Dr. Kim and I were just saying that I just felt really grouchy and I wasn't sleeping very well because we were eating later and we were indulging in more indulgent foods than I would normally. So that really affected me. So I guess this week I'm really trying to kind of on the back of the holidays, um, really trying hard to stop eating at seven. Um, so to give my time, my body some time to recoup and digest before bedtime. Um, and then eating as much whole organic foods as you can. Again, um, sometimes we think that organic food is really, really expensive and sometimes it can be, but sometimes actually the price differential is very little. So I always say that actually look at the different options available. So one of the um, foods that is actually on part of the dirty dozen list, celery, um, the price differential between organic celery and regular celery is actually less than a dollar if you look. I mean, different stores obviously have different prices, but um, I noticed that the store that I shop at, it was only like, I want to say 70 cents. So for me, I'd rather spend 70 cents and have the organic celery, for example. So I'd say maybe shop around and just see, but also that failing, buying from the farmer's markets in Bermuda is going to be much, much healthier option, much less pollutants involved then I guess all the stuff that's imported in as well. So I know the farmer's markets have started back up again, so perhaps look at that. And just one thing I'll post about, you mentioned the Dirty Dozen, a lot mm -hmm. of people probably don't know about this, the Environmental Working Group, which posts the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 13. That's right. So that'll be listed below. Yeah. Um, and then fresh fiber first. And I don't know about you guys, but we tend to kind of have the same recipes on repeat because I've got used to them and I've got the right herbs and spices and it's just easy to do. Um, but I would really, really recommend um, maybe getting a re nice recipe book. I actually treated myself to this over Christmas and it's just called Veg and it's essentially just different recipes. And um, again, me being quite a, um, I like to look at pictures, lots of pretty pictures you can kind of flick through, gives you lots of different ideas on how to cook things. And then um, I basically bookmark them so that when I'm looking for a new SB idea, I can just go straight to the ones that I've liked um, and then it's all there and I can just get whatever I need um, to go. And it's just a nice way to introduce um, different types of vegetables or maybe the same vegetables that you're used to having, but maybe cooking in a slightly different way, adding different spices and herbs and stuff can really bring out different flavors and textures, mm -hmm. right? So And it's wonderful, you know, fiber, it's getting introduced to new things, trying new things, but mm -hmm. we know from the gut microbiome perspective that fiber is a food that's gonna fuel all those good bacteria mm -hmm. that live inside our gut. Exactly. And really the research is showing more and more that's what we need that's going to provide a lot of benefits from the inside out. Uh, and we'll post the cookbook too that, uh, that nurse bought herself for Christmas mm -hmm. and maybe you wanna try a recipe from that book too. Um, and then moving on um, to autonomic behavior, pairing, sorry. Um, I am trying to be working on being more present in the moment. Um, I'm the person where at the end of the yoga, where they say to try to clear your mind, I'm just thinking, okay, as I leave here, I need to go to the supermarket <laughs> and pick up this, and this is for dinner, and this is what I need to do next. And my mind is like completely not there because there's always a conveyor belt of things that I need to be doing. Um, and often I find that I miss the moment um, and I'm not that present. So I'm trying really hard to just live in the moment and then move on to the next thing. So that's been quite challenging for me, I won't lie. And it is like for all of us too, like 12 years ago when I had my burnout, that was the biggest thing. I never thought that I could sit still yeah. and it's a struggle, but it's a practice It is. and you practice mm -hmm. and when you practice, it gets easier, oh, right? It does. And Absolutely. it just takes time and just doing it again yeah. and again. And one thing somebody told me is that when, um, going back to the yoga thing, if something 
because I always used to say that I can't meditate because as soon as I start to even get, get to that stage, something's come into my mind. And I said, that's okay, just sit with that one thing. Mm -hmm. And since I've tried to do that, just to sit with that one thing, it's kind of helped me because then it's just that one thing rather than the conveyor of stuff coming through. So um, I guess it takes different shapes of different people. Yeah, and it's just time and just sitting and taking that moment mm -hmm. just to pause. That's, yeah. that's the key. Um, rest and recovery. Um, Again, I tell my patients all the time, no screens two hours before bed, and I'm really guilty. Bad for that. guilty. <laughs> but uh, I say it's Dr. Keenan. One thing I have started from January first is um, I take my iWatch and my phone off. Well, I don't take my phone off, but I put it on the charger outside of the bedroom when I get myself ready for bed. So then the, when I'm sitting down to relax, to read my book or watch my TV program, whatever, um, I'm not getting disturbed by the watch beeping um, and I'm not um, kind of like just looking at the phone for no apparent reason or scrolling or doing all the things that we tend to do that really we shouldn't be doing before bedtime. So trying to limit that has been a challenge, um, but I'm really working on it. But as with the other things on there, um, eliminating lights two hours before bed. I mean, we've been doing that. I think uh, depending on where your house is um, in Bermuda, we don't seem to have that many ceiling lights. I don't know what it's like in your house, but we tend to have more lamps anyway. So that kind of helps, but we burn a lot of candles and we diffuse a lot mm -hmm. in our house. Um, and that kind of sets the mood and starts to kind of calm the nervous system down. So it's kind of nice because by the time you get to bed, you're kind of halfway there to get into a deep sleep. And I find that actually on the nights that um, I do that, I, if we're not away from home, my REM sleep um, is much better than on the nights that that doesn't happen. So it definitely works. Yes, and it's quite something when you can start to um, follow these things, but to see the changes in your body, mm. to feel it, but then to quantify it. So we've got Apple Watch, we've got Aura Ring. Yeah. So you can tell uh, Nurse and I also both have worn Freestyle Libra. <laughs> you know, we're into our gadgets as well. Um, but all of this is just, you know, this week is meant to be one of the little step that you can do to take yourself forward and to hear other people's experiences about that and too. And it is little steps, right? So, because little steps make the biggest, because I always say to my patients, just like one thing, one thing, and then do that consistently until it becomes a habit. And then it's like brushing your teeth. Like we don't think about brushing our teeth anymore. Do you? It just happens. It's not a chore. And so little steps, when they become habit they're not sure anymore so then you can work on the next little steps and I think that's just the way we can move forward right without exactly. interfering too much with our daily schedules and stuff so um and then finally the um joyful movement now um I really enjoy um I've run many marathons I really enjoy high intensity activity um running spinning hit exercises lifting. she's a personal trainer as well <laughs> um, so uh, over the years I haven't really done much of the um lower intensity activities and since turning 40 my body's kind of just told me hey hang on like this is not happening <laughs> time to like have a bit of a yin to your yang so um i've definitely enjoyed taking participating in yoga and pilates a lot more than um i did maybe in my 30s but now i can see the benefits as well maybe i didn't give it as much a go back um in my 30s um also things like um, playing tennis or going for a walk or just like, you know, going for a walk on the beach um, um, in nature where you've got repetitive um, imagery where it's really good for our brain as well. All of those things um, I've been doing more and more of and I can um, definitely see the benefits in that as well. I think you also, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, if I have a bad day, again, I'll go to the beach. I'm very lucky to be able to do that or go walk in the jungle we have around here. But even in Canada, you know, I would go into the forest and there's something about the pine trees. And it's true, this forest bathing mm -hmm. is very relaxing yeah. for our brains. Yeah. Uh, pro creates a really good environment for us. So that's why when you think about movement, it doesn't have to be painful, hardcore going to the gym, but it literally can just be having fun. Yeah. You know, mid-afternoon dancing in your living room to your, your favorite song. So oh, yeah, definitely. Keeping active, <laughs> yeah. Um, and going back to the nature walks as well, if you ever get an opportunity to walk barefoot, like maybe in the sand or on soil, um, that grounding is really, really good for us as well, yes. isn't it? So it, has, it brings kind of like a sense of peace to us. A sense of peace to us, but yeah. also it's been studied that it can lower inflammation in the body. They've done a research studies looking at cardiac patients mm -hmm. and it lowered their inflammatory enzymes yeah. over a 60 day period when they were basically walking barefoot in the soil. Yeah, yeah. so go barefoot guys. <laughs> Come to Bermuda and you can join us all here <laughs> for my Canadian friends. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more. So, you know, of course, uh, nurse is a nutritionist, 
So we were going to dive a little bit more into some of the food and the intermittent fasting. Yeah, so the intermittent fasting for me is an interesting one. I actually wrote my dissertation when I was doing my um, my finals, my nutrition course on this because um, I just I was always fascinated by it. I don't I'm not a believer in diets because I believe that if one worked, then there wouldn't be a new one coming out literally <laughs> on a daily basis. I feel like um, unfortunately it's a marketing ploy for most of it to um, take away a lot of our hard earned money, and unfortunately it often ends up with people losing weight fast but then gaining it twice as fast um, because it messes with our metabolism. I don't believe intermittent fasting is a diet, do you? No, intermittent fasting really is kind of that whole, that is how we're meant to eat. Like if we look at those, the circadian balance, right. this is what our body is tuned to do. If you look at animals, animals don't eat, most of them don't eat continuously throughout the day. Um, and actually our, our food guides were never designed to have three meals and three snacks. Right. That's not really how it was spread out. So if you look at the work of Sachin Panda, who is out of the University of um, UCLA. So his work, you know, he looked at this timing model mm -hmm. because we always thought that it was a good idea, but when he did the studies, he really saw the benefits of this narrowed feeding window, you know, preferably in an eight hour window. Mm -hmm. You know, some people take it to six or 10 hours. Yeah. What's your window? Well, there's, there's lots of ways you can do it. I mean, like some people do it so that um, they eat minimal amounts on two days of the week and then eat normally the five days of the week. That's one way of doing it. Some people, um, do um, uh, like, a, like I said, an eight hour window and then fast for 16 hours. I do, for me personally, I do an eight hour window most of the days. But again, I love the flexibility of it because, um, so for example, if I happen to be eating uh, a little bit later on one day, I just start eating a little bit later the following day. Or if I don't necessarily get to my 16 hours fast, it's no big deal. Like I'll just do a 14 hour fast. It's like, it's, there's no set rules. Um, I believe that anything above 12 hours is, has beneficial uh, impact on our um, on lots of different systems in the body, right? Anyway, so going above 12 hours, um, which shouldn't really be that hard to do because if we are getting our eight hours sleep and we are stopping eating three hours before bed and we're kind of there anyway, aren't we? That's right. um, so um, obviously flexibility element is really crucial. And I think that's why it's really suitable for most people. Obviously people with eating disorders and things like that, um, they'll need to, I think everybody should really um, consult their physician before embarking on anything, but especially for um, that group of people. Um, but also for me especially, I find that my, my brain works uh, much clearer. Like I just feel like I've got better energy. I, I haven't got that brain fog. I, my system seems to be working better. Do you find that as well? With oh, fast? definitely yeah. when I started intermittent fasting. And mm -hmm. you know, when we look at it from a metabolic health standpoint, we're allowing to really allow the whole process of autophagy, which is programmed cell death. Like that happens when we don't feed our bodies. Mm -hmm. The body goes through its house cleaning system. Yeah. We really need a time to have everything to, to calm down a little bit. And then you get the boost in the mitochondria. And remember the mitochondria are those battery cells that give us all the energy. So those are some of the great benefits that we get. Cold. And keep us youthful and like, like look at this, you know? <laughs> Beautiful, right? <laughs> Her skin is amazing, by the way. <laughs> um, but also, like you touched on this, on our gut health as well, because if we, it's almost like if um, pedestrians walked on the streets all day and all night and, you know, the sweepers never got a chance to come and clean up. It's the same thing, right? So if we continually keep feeding and feeding and feeding, the kind of the sweepers inside of us never have a chance to kind of clear up the debris and get rid of like any um, damaged cells or any waste or anything. So our gut lining never really has the time to recoup and rebuild itself. So of course that's going to lead to leaky gut and all sorts of different uh, issues which we haven't really got time to get into now, but it really does improve our gut health. Uh, as well as that big blood sugar control, right? So our blood glucose levels need that break. Right, and you know, when we look at the studies too, we know sometimes, you know, when people are diagnosed with diabetes or insulin resistance, simply by intermittent fasting, not eating before you go to bed, it can make huge differences huge, huge, just huge. on its own. So I think maybe that's one of our takeaways because often people say, I struggle, you know, I don't know what to eat. Even if you just shorten that window frame of what you're eating, try to eat whole foods as much as possible. You will see differences within your oh, health. Definitely. And, you know, in a world where we're all becoming more and more insulin resistant, this is a way to reverse that and increase the sensitivity to insulin in our body, which really then decreases the inflammation in the body. I mean, it's just, I mean, the, the, the benefits can go on and on and on, but um, hopefully you get a little idea of like the benefits that will fit in with your lifestyle and how easy it is to actually follow. Um, 
um, when my patients ask me about it, I always say maybe it's just start with a 12 hour fast. It's really not that difficult to do a 12 hour fast. I think most people can do it. Um, now, the thing that always comes up is like, I really enjoy morning coffee, which I do also, I won't lie. Um, but unfortunately, even having, and they're like, even if I drop, have a drop, smallest tiny little bit of milk in it, is it still okay? And the answer, unfortunately, is no, because it's not so much to do with um, the amount of milk, it's just that as soon as we get any kind of um, food as such, the whole system comes out um, of the fast and then the, the benefits aren't there anymore, unfortunately, it kind of stops benefits. Um, one thing I would say is though, um, break your fast if, as much as you can with a protein source first, because it allows you to kind of be in that kind of insulin resistance um, or sensitive zone a little bit longer rather than spiking your insulin first thing with a sugar-based um, meal. Um, so we're thinking maybe like an omelette or something um, with fiber and protein would be a good way to break your fast. I don't know how you break your fast, what do you do? That's exactly it. Yeah, because yeah, I'm usually, you know, protein or eggs would be my thing if I'm mm -hmm. going to be breaking it in the morning. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and me too. And then um, and then enjoy your coffee maybe um, a little bit afterwards. You can obviously have black coffee, you can have black tea, you can have unlimited amounts of water um, during your fasting period. I typically just stay with just regular water. Um, I don't particularly like black tea, but I would have like a herbal tea. I have... Um, I always have a kind of peppermint tea or a calamari tea or something like that um, about eight o'clock with my magnesium supplement to help me go to sleep. Um, and that's kind of what I do, but um, it's completely up to you guys what you want to do. But um, yeah, so start with 12 hours and then maybe give it a week, see how you feel and, and then maybe increase it to 13 hours and just play around with it. There's no hard set rule as to number of hours really. Right. And I think the key is that pre-bedtime, you know, that's that would be the one thing that I would reinforce, like we oh, said, yeah. is try to expand that window because we know that when you eat before bed, number one, it's gonna drive your heart rate up. And we know that because I see it on my ring. If I eat late at night, my heart rate goes oh. up, my heart rate variability goes down, which I don't want because that puts additional stress on your body. And then I can see it when people wear the Freestyle Libra, their blood sugars stay elevated through the night even higher than they would be if they ate the same food in the daytime. Absolutely. So just remember that really at least two, three hours if you can get it, no food before bed. Yeah. So, wow, we've had a lot to share with you all today. Mm -hmm. um, it's been great to have Nursa here and I have a feeling maybe we're gonna come back and oh, for sure. <laughs> maybe we'll have to do something together uh, again oh, in the I future. Love that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and talk a little bit more about nutrition. So um, the one thing I, everyone's gonna be waiting for is the word of the day, Nursa. So in order to get their names put in for the draw, because we've got $50, uh, three $50 gift cards Ooh. from Amazon, okay. so they need a word of the day. So what would be your word of the day? Can it be two? Sure. Be present. Oh, <laughs> I like that one. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you very you much. You're welcome. Thank okay. you for having me. This is great. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.